now what we're going to do is take this 0.5012 grams. Make sure when you're recording things, you write down the units. So if I told you I had 0.5012 and didn't say grams, you wouldn't know exactly how much I'm talking about. But for 0.5012 grams of this mixture, we're going to put it in a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. The suggestion from the instructions is that 10 milliliters will be sufficient to dissolve this. I sometimes am a little risky and ambitious and I'm gonna go with nine milliliters and hopefully that'll dissolve everything. If it doesn't, I can add a little milliliter later. So I'm thinking maybe I even go with eight. So I'm gonna put in a little less than 10 milliliters of water. Yeah, we got about nine milliliters of water in there. And then I'm gonna put it on the hot plate. In the distillation, we use the heating mantle, which has a space for heating that's appropriate for a round device. Since we're using a flat-bottomed Erlenmeyer, we're gonna use a hot plate to go ahead and warm this up. And the idea is we're gonna warm this up until all of the salicylic acid dissolves. Whatever urea is in there has probably dissolved already at cold temperatures, although no guarantee. Sometimes dissolution is a little slow, even if it's going to be complete. The speed at which something happens and how much it happens are sometimes different. But we're going to start the hot plate warming. I put it about a setting of three or four here. Um, and again, it's waiting for something to dissolve. Now we're not melting this. So it, because it's in water, it can't possibly get above 100 degrees without boiling the water off. And if this stuff melts at 156, we're not melting it. When we recrystallize like this, we're gonna dissolve the compound in warm water to make a solution. And once we get the entire mixture dissolved, then we're gonna cool it back down. So. As we're waiting for the hot plate to get started warming, it's probably a good idea to prepare an ice bath. So we got a 250 milliliter beaker, a little ice. And then since the solid ice doesn't get in as close contact as a solution would, we're gonna throw a little water in there. Make the ice water bath. And this will be a nice way to lower the temperature once we get everything dissolved. The other thing that I mentioned I'm going to start setting up is our filtration apparatus. So we're going to have a very small amount of compound, so we're going to use this little Hirsch funnel. The Hirsch funnel is part of our kit, and we got a little teeny piece of paper to filter with. So I'm going to put the little piece of paper little flask, get a little micro clamp here so I can clamp it and then I put it on right there. Again occasionally we want to check to see how this is warming up. We don't want to really boil it if we don't have to. We want to dissolve it up hopefully just shy of boiling temperatures. And I'm gonna swirl it around and make sure that if there's any solid on the sides of the flask, it manages to get down in the flask. It is warming up nicely. It's still sort of a nice bath temperature. It's not too hot to touch. Make sure you don't touch the ceramic. This might get really hot, like 120, 130 degrees Celsius. The top of the flask is generally gonna be nice and touchable, even when the solution is pretty warm even as long as you don't boil it. If you boil it, then this will get up to boiling water temperature, then you don't want to touch the flask. But for right now, I'm going to swirl that around a, a little bit. It looks like a lot of it's dissolved. Some of the solid is getting up on the walls of the flask a little bit, so I'm going to try to swish those down in there. Although as long as there's a lot of solid in here, the solid's going to get up on the sides. So I keep an eye on that, watch as the, distillation, as the dissolution progresses. Again, if I have a partner, 
it's really good to sort of both work and both inform the other person as to what they're doing and how they're doing it. So right now I'm setting up, and actually I'm not setting this up right, I'm connecting the two flasks and I'm like, what's the flow of the air going to be between these two? How do I connect to the vacuum? And that's because I'm missing one adapter. So I have to go get the vacuum trap adapter. And actually, I can't do that right now because I can't leave this unattended. So that's where it's really nice to work with a partner because my partner could run and get the vacuum trap adapter while I pay attention to the dissolution and make sure nothing heats out of control or boils or whatever else. So partner is really nice. If I'm working alone, it would be nice if I prepared every piece of glassware and every little piece of apparatus that I needed so that I could maybe do a little multitasking here. I don't want to fail to pay enough attention to this because I get too focused on that. So it's actually okay. One of the reasons we have a three hour lab period is so we have plenty of time for the slow process, setting things up and taking things down. So watching this as it dissolves and a lot of times after the hot plate is sort of got as hot as it's going to get at one setting, I might add a little more heat if it's not dissolved yet. Again, the eight or nine milliliters that I threw in there should be sufficient. We can actually calculate based on the solubility and that's something I'll talk about in another video the theory behind this and how much salicylic acid dissolves in how much water. So if we had 10 milliliters of water, how much salicylic acid could we dissolve? And so if this was entirely salicylic acid, would it dissolve? As I mentioned, I put a little less than 10 milliliters in here. So if I needed an entire 10 milliliters, if after it heats up, it's still not dissolving, I can add a little. I can add a little water and help it to dissolve. It's funny watching the little crystals in there. It's a little snow globey. When I swirl it around, you can see the crystals that are still remaining, little micro crystals floating around. And as the heat goes, the stuff, the heat is added to the liquid it'll raise and so it gets less dense and go to the top. And then the liquid at the top is cooler and so it'll sink back down. And sometimes the crystals go up and down with it. So it's really cool. And we're starting to see a little condensation up here as this is approaching boiling temperature. So I know my hot plate is pretty, pretty warm. It's still not all dissolved. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little more water. So I was hoping to dissolve it in more like eight and a half or nine milliliters, but if I'm lucky and I have more salicylic acid in here, it might take a little more water to dissolve it all. And that's the thing is you want the minimum amount of solvent because the more solvent you use, the more remains in the solvent even after you've cooled it. So you want to dissolve this in the minimum amount of warm solvent that you can. And we got a couple of little pesky crystals that aren't quite dissolving yet. One of the things that the lab doesn't talk about, but it's very important, is if we had something that was insoluble in there, some other contaminant, like even sand, we could be adding a lot of water and waiting for it to dissolve, and it just wouldn't because it's not soluble. So in that case, to remove that contaminant, we'd go ahead and filter now while it's warm so that any solid impurity that won't dissolve will um, be removed by filtration. But we, if 
we've been informed correctly and everything in here is either salicylic acid or urea, then everything should dissolve in about the amount of water that we're dealing with here. And we are right up there where it's boiling and we got a couple of pesky little crystals that don't want to dissolve. Right, and as I see little bubbles for the boiling and some of the condensation, then I know we're at the maximum temperature we're going to get to. And if they're still not dissolved, that means I need a little more water. All right, so I think things are pretty much dissolved. I'm going to turn the heat off. And one of the things I'm going to do is leave it on the hot plate because we have a lot of time for this. The slower that things cool down, the bigger and better the crystals will get. So if we just flash cold it, you know, cooled it down to ice water temperatures, there'd be lots of little crystals forming all at the same time, and they'd be really small. But if we cool it down slowly, then one crystal might form, and a lot of other molecules will grow onto that crystal, and that'll get a chance to slowly grow really large. So once I get everything all dissolved like this, and it's... I'm going to want to cool it as slowly as possible so that I get larger crystals. If I didn't have time, I might not. So I've turned the heat off. And since this is still warm on the plate, then we've got to wait until the heat leaves the plate, and this is going to cool really slowly. If I put this on a cold surface, then the heat would leave the flask into the cold surface here and it would cool down much quicker. So I want slow cooling, so I'm gonna leave it on the warm plate, and then I can go ahead and find, go fetch my filter trap and set up the filter, so I'm not gonna just wait for this and be unproductive, but I'm gonna set up some of my other stuff. I might look at the post lab questions and see what I can answer now. So we'll go get a filter trap. And we have a nice picture of the filtration apparatus right here. So if you forgot how this was set up, um, this would help you. So what we're going to want to do is draw, use the vacuum to suck the air through so it'll filter quicker. And so we need the vacuum hose connected to our filter trap flask. This is called the filter flask because it's a regular Erlenmeyer but with a filter sidearm, making it a filter flask. And this is the filter trap adapter and we're going to run the hose and make sure whenever you're putting a hose on a piece of glassware, you put the pressure directly in line with this. Use slow, firm pressure. If you try to rush this or you get sideways, you might break the tube. If it doesn't go on easily, talk to your instructor. Sometimes you can use a little lubricant. If it's the right size hose and it's not too stiff, the right size piece of glass, it should go okay. So now we've got Hirsch funnel with a little piece of paper in it to the small filter flask clamped with a micro clamp. So use a small clamp for the small flask. Vacuum hose to the filter adapter into the filter flask. So you can see the flow of suction. The air will go through here, helping to pull the solution through, making the filtration quick. And then it'll go into the filter trap. So if any liquid happens to pop out of this flask, it'll end up in this flask and it won't go to the vacuum pump. And then the vacuum hose takes the air through to the vacuum. Just waiting for our crystals to be formed so we can filter them. So again, this is going to take a while depending on our level of patience. If we want large crystals, we will let this cool very slowly on the hot plate. If we were in a rush, we would just plunge it into the ice water and make the crystals form right away. So we're going to do it slowly. <laughs> All right, so I wish you guys were here because you missed one of the coolest things that you can see with this crystallization. So right now you can see we have quite a few crystals in this ice cold water solution. And when it was on the hot plate and it was all homogeneous and clear, a little nucleation occurred, and so a little needle grew, 
and from the same point in nucleation, three or four more needles grew. So we had this little cluster of needle crystals floating all by itself in this solution. So it was a clear colorless solution with just this one little crystal of needles. And then we went to go get a different lens, so maybe we could capture a picture of this beauty. And by the time we got the lens, the whole thing was crystallized and we had all these crystals as just it looked opaque there and we missed the opportunity to catch the little like spaceship of needle-like crystals as it was flying through the space's solution. And these needles are pretty big because we cooled slowly on the hot plate and then on the desk and then in the ice water. It's, they formed pretty well. Again, sometimes when I shake it up, it, but we got some good pictures of the crystals and hopefully you could see them. So now we wanna isolate these beautiful little crystals. So we turn on the vacuum and we can see the suction is here. We can also push a little water through there and make sure, yep, suction is good. We can see the water accumulating in the flask. If any water went out the side hose, it'd catch here, not go to the vacuum. So here's our filtration setup. We don't want this to warm too much. And we wanna get as many of the crystals to dump out of the flask into the Hirsch funnel so we can isolate them. And they are just super shiny, beautiful crystals. If you like crystals, you might want to study some geology as well, because Mother Nature makes some of the most beautiful crystals you can ever imagine. And that um, the state mineral is wolfenite, which is beautiful red-orange crystal. And I've gone and found some wolfenite. Now, the problem I have is there's a large number of crystals still in the flask. And I don't know whether I'm gonna be able to get them, coax them out with the spatula, because I want them all to be isolated. We wanna get all the crystals we can. If this warms up, some of them might re-dissolve in the residual water that's there. I usually like it when it swooshes out. And again, it's not very soluble in ice water. So what we typically are gonna do is have some very cold water that we can use to help transport the rest of the crystals. So I'm gonna add a little ice water to this, swirl them around again, and hopefully not all the crystals will dissolve. And now we can swish these in here. And that also serves the purpose in addition to swishing some of the crystals into the Hirsch funnel that didn't wanna go at first, is we also are washing the crystals that are in the Hirsch funnel. So I don't have 100% of them in there, but the ones that are still in the flask and affixed to the flask are not really that much in terms of mass. Almost all the crystals are here in the, fu in the funnel and where they should be. And we're gonna allow the vacuum to suck some air across there, make sure we've sucked as much water out. Now we're gonna isolate these crystals and let them dry over the week so that um, we get a mass of the dry purified crystals and then we're going to take a melting point because again if this is really pure it should melt between 156 and 158 degrees Celsius. Our original sample started melting at 123.6 so very impure lots of urea in it. These look fabulous. I would bet just about anything that they're very pure salicylic acid just because of the way they look and we'll get a little close-up of that in a second. But that's essentially the isolation of the recrystallized crystals. They're beautiful and very pure and valuable and successful experiment.